Bob again, and today I'm going to show you on this uh, model we have here at JTEC on how to work on a air brake system. As you can tell, I already have it fully disassembled. Show you major components; they're all over the place, and explain exactly what they do and how to, you know, search them for serviceability. Of course, the first thing I'll show you is. You got your axle housing. Now this has nothing to do with your, your brakes really, but this is where your, your drum rests on and all your brake pieces actually rest on. So it actually is kind of important. Um, air, dr air brakes, air drum brakes uh, work similar to regular drum brakes, except instead of being ran hydraulically with brake fluid, they're ran with an air system. And as you can tell, you got all these relay valves all over this thing and you follow the air hoses and of course this one powers the front axle and this one powers the rear axle you even have the airbags on here which are controlled by these valves so other than that that's your basic area okay now what we'll do is we'll start down here with the hub assembly now your hub assembly is actually what your brake drum and your brake shoes rest on top of um, you want to look in there, you want to make sure that the bearings down in there, you know, they, they spin freely. I've already pulled them out and looked at them. They're good. They're not seized up or anything. They're well lubricated. Same as the front bearings and you do the same exact thing. You'll literally pick them up, roll them around, make sure they don't spin. You don't hear no grinding or anything like that. So there's your bearings. Then you want to come over here to your, your shoes themselves. Uh, just like in drum brakes, they can separate from the the pad can separate from the shoe itself from overheating or just dry rot being old damage. So you want to pick them up, look at them, go over them, make sure you don't see any big, huge dents in them. Now, because these are so much wider in surface area, a small nick in them isn't really going to cause much. But if there's a big chunk missing out, you definitely want to replace those shoes. Um, you got some of your retainer springs to hold these together and everything. Next on, we're going to move to your spider assembly, which uh, also goes on to the hub and uh, it holds in your S tube, which your S tube holds your S cam. I'll show you that here in a second. Uh, as you can see, tell there's a grease feeding here. So when you're servicing this, you want to make sure you clean all the old grease out. Maybe get a rag or some kind of brake clean or something, get it in there, get it all nice and clean and then repack it with new grease before you put it back together. Now we'll move on to your brake chamber. This is where the magic works. Uh, without this right here, um, this is uh, inside of here, this is the two springs with your vacuum plate. And actually when the air is uh, supplied to this, the spring con, uh, compresses and that's what gives you your stopping power now let's say you have a bad brake chamber there's a way to still make it to where your wheels will spin freely and everything like that and that is you would pull this bolt out and put a caging bolt in there and you would literally cage the bolt or the spring manually you'll compress it manually and make it to where it unlocks the shoes from the drum and that way the vehicle can roll and at least get it into a bay to where you can service the brake chamber or find out why those drums are seizing up but a lot of the times it's because your brake chamber is not working properly. Next I'll move it on to your slack adjuster. Now of course this is how your vehicle or you adjust your brakes is with this slack adjuster. You got this little piece here and this little mechanism and what it does is it gets rid of your, 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 your play and your uh, extra space and everything like that and it makes it to where your drums fit straight to the shoe instead of having that star cluster that you see on a small automobile drum brakes you you have this and last but not least but you got your s cam and uh it looks like a typical cam of course i mean this is what turns and gives you the stopping power you want to look over the cam look all over the teeth and make sure they're not damaged or anything no no brakes on the teeth because if you have brakes it's not going to do its job so other than that i mean you have your your axle this has really nothing to do with the brakes but you still want to check it since you already have it out check your teeth and everything 
um, no damage to that. And then you have your drum. Now, just like your shoes, your drum can become warped from overheating and uh, you know rust and water and all that. Now, to me, the disc brake is your better design because it has better uh, heat dissipating uh, technology rather than the drum. Heat gets stuck in the drum, which causes your drum to to uh, warp. And then also the disc, uh, what do you want to call it, uh, dissipates water, sheds water easier um, than the drum. Drum will let water get catch, caught in there and that's what causes the rust, that's what causes your brakes to seize up. But other than that, that's your air brake system in a nutshell. Thanks again, have a good day.